Focus. I innovate. Enable. Hello and welcome. You're with Decoding Business Growth. I'm Sumera Abdi. Now, one of the objectives of a newspaper is to understand the popular feeling and give expression to it. Another is to arouse amongst the people certain desirable sentiments. And the third is to fearlessly expose popular defects. This is how Mahatma Gandhi described the role of the print media. It was these objectives and the need for a mouthpiece to spread the importance of Satyagraha amongst the people that led him to launch his own newspaper, Indian Opinion, in South Africa. This was followed by a couple of others like Young India and Harijan and he used these journals as platforms to voice views on every subject. This week's episode is very similar. It's the story of a man who had a strong desire for creating a newspaper that would reflect the free voice of the people during the Quit India movement of 1942. Thus was born the Hindi newspaper Dainik Jagran from the stable of the Jagran Prakashan Group. Its founder, the late Puran Chandra Gupta, a committed nationalist, has indeed created one of the most influential and largest selling Hindi dailies in the country. The tradition of truth that Puran Chandra Gupta espoused was carried forward by literary stalwarts like Narendra Mohan, who was the paper's editorial helmsman till 2002. So take a look at the Jagran Prakashan story. It tells us that anything built with dedication, conviction and passion is bound to meet with success. Over 68 million Indians in 15 states every morning are reading the latest in politics, economy and sports on Dainik Jagran, Midday and other dailies of this well-known print media outfit Jagran Prakashan. It has arguably the largest footprint in India with its print operation spanning 12 titles, 15 states, 5 languages and over 100 editions and these include some veritable titles as the world's largest red daily, India's number one compact daily, India's number one afternoon daily and India's number one Urdu daily. Over the past seven decades, Jagran Prakashan has grown into a multifaceted group with abiding interest in print, out of home, activations and digital channels. So who is the man behind this success story? It was the late Puran Chandra Gupta, a committed nationalist who strongly felt the need for creating a newspaper that would reflect the free voice of the people. This during the Quit India Movement of 1942. Thus was born Jagran Prakashan. His brainchild remains true to this vision as it influences and helps form public opinion that shapes the political destiny of the world's largest democracy. Long history of this newspaper, as you saw, got started by my grandfather in 1942. And we have come a long way since then. And what primarily what I can relate to it as because I have been looking after it for last 25, 30 years only. But what went before those 30 years was the critical point or the critical foundation that was laid down by the promoters and my grandfather, my father, and the, especially the journalistic ethos, the connect that this journalistic ethos and the way we were wanting to portray this newspaper for, to, the, to, to the masses and the readers. That was a basic foundation block on which now this company has built this newspaper into being a national brand. Uh, so, and the trust or the kind of journalism that in those founding years was done has actually grown upon people and today it is a national brand but it is perceived to be a newspaper having a voice of this country a, a true voice and I would go one step forward to say a voice that is more uh, on the sense of being a Bharat than an India since 1947, Dainik Jagran has been expanding its editions across the country. In 1947, the second edition was launched in Kanpur. In a succession of planned expansions, Riva and Bhopal editions were added in 1953 and 1956. 
Gorakhpur was added in 1975, followed by Varanasi, Allahabad, Meerut, Agra and Bareilly in the 1980s and finally Delhi in 1990. After this, Dainik Jagran ventured out into other states like Uttarakhand, Haryana, Bihar, Jharkhand, Punjab, Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh and West Bengal. The journey since has not been a cakewalk. With the increasing importance of Tier 2 and Tier 3 towns, competition has intensified and it faced the twin threats of losing market share and talent. The global meltdown of 2008-2009 and 2011-2012 had compounded its woes. During these turbulent times, Jagran Prakashan stuck to the basics by focusing on providing consumer differentiation in terms of content, offerings and innovation. At the same time, it controlled costs, motivated the team to deliver against the odds and looked after the interests of consumers and other stakeholders. Apart from spreadheading its geographical presence and sticking to basics, the company has strengthened its position by a series of acquisitions. In April 2012, Jagran acquired the two leading dailies of Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh, Nay Dunya and Nav Dunya. Earlier in April 2010, it had acquired the print business of Midday Infomedia Limited, publishers of Midday English, Midday Gujarati and the largest red Urdu daily, the Inquilab. To further broaden its bouquet, the company acquired Radio City, owned by Music Broadcast Private Limited, that has 20 stations under the Radio City brand and 21 internet radio stations under the brand planetradiocity.com. This acquisition has given it access to the high-growth, high-margin radio business. Uh, acquisitions was after the IPO, once we got the real money to grow, uh, the promoters and the company directors decided that uh, uh, the, uh, the greenfield uh, route is uh, kind of an expensive route where things cannot really, uh, are not guaranteed to be successful because a greenfield project you need to build a brand in media. So we thought of that uh, and at that time we could see and sense that uh, there, are, there are media opportunities available in the market which will want to cash out, the promoters would want to cash out. So a um, uh, good amount of thought went to it that uh, we will not kind of promote too many or big greenfield ventures, not that we have not done, uh, we have done few like INEX is there, a very small venture, Punjabi Jagran is there. But essentially, uh, the idea was to acquire and uh, and to immediately acquire a geography and and which is a, or uh, that brand is kind of well entrenched in the geography. So Naidunya, Radio City, Midday, all are a process of that acquisition. All this has yielded results as its publications increased from five in 2008 to 12 as on December 2014, and at the same time, its readership grew from 56 million to 68 million. Its circulation also increased from 2.8 million in 2008 to 5.3 million in December 2014. From being present in 12 states and 2 languages, today it has a presence in 15 states and 5 languages. This strong circulation reach and wide presence in regional languages has helped the company to garner strong advertising revenues. Advertising accounts for nearly 70% of Jagran's revenues and 60% of its advertising revenues comes from local players which makes it less affected by trends in national advertising which hinge on economic prospects. All these strategies have helped the company to remain profitable despite its operating in the print industry where the more one sells, the more one loses. We are a profit focused company care for consistent cash generation and uh, <coughs> balance long term, medium term and short term goals in the interest of shareholders. We do not chase unprofitable growth in the top line. In any case, in any media industry, the profit is delivered through advertisement revenue. This is an area we have done fantastically well. If you look at our record for past five years, 
we have uh, grown our revenues by uh, CAGR of nearly 15 percent which is clearly beating the industry's average growth rate of 11 percent, 11 and a half percent. Even if I exclude the inorganic growth, even then we have done far better than the industry's overall growth rate. This attitude of venturing into profitable businesses has led its profit to grow from 98 crore rupees in FY 2008 to 308 crore rupees in FY 2015. Revenues have grown from 749 crores to 1769 crores. On that note, it's time for a short break. When we come back, CNBC TV 18's Samira Abdi talks to Ravi Sardana of ICICI Securities to decode Jagran Prakashan's success story. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Jagran Prakashan's stock has given over 50% returns in the past 20 months and at the same time, investors have received consistent dividends since 2007. Sumaira Abdi caught up with Ravi Sardana of ICICI Securities to get the investment banker's perspective on what made Jagran Prakashan a success story. Ravi, welcome back to the show. This week, we're talking about Jagran Prakashan. Now, in the country, in terms of readership, it's the number one newspaper. So for someone like you who's been closely observing not just the sector, but this newspaper, what do you attribute their success to? Is it just editorial integrity or is it marketing prowess? So, you know, uh, I feel uh, Jagran has a very strong connect uh, with the pulse of the people. Uh, the brand uh, enjoys a very good credibility uh, with its readers. Uh, this has been built uh, over a period of the last uh, six decades. And there's a history of uh, integral uh, editorial integrity and uh, I think a connect, uh, a knowledge of the issues concerning the people. Uh, this is what's created this uh, strong brand. Also, uh, the group has a very deep infrastructure and uh, this enables them to uh, be able to collect news uh, from even the interiors and provide local news in local editions to even the smaller towns in tier 2, tier 3 regions of the country. And this is what's helped, uh, I think, the group build and uh, maintain this uh, connect with the readers. Okay, so it's grown organically, but the management seems to have also adopted the inorganic path over the last few years, you know, because they perceive this path or this route to actually be relatively low risk. So do you think this balance actually works out for them? See, in the media space, uh, m is a very effective strategy for growth. Uh, because, you know, if you were to launch uh, in a new geography, uh, you would really need a lot of capital investment and you would have to carry losses for at least three years. So in that sense, uh, in the media space, it's very effective to go into m and to go and pick up uh, established brands. And I would say that Jagran has done a very uh, smart thing. They have been very fortunate that they have been able to manage three successful m and uh, in the past. Uh, the recent one, uh, Radio City, that's like a national leader in terms of the brand, in terms of its uh, listenership. So that's been a very good uh, acquisition for them. Uh, the other good thing which uh, stands out is that they've been able to do uh, all of these valuations, uh, all of these acquisitions at attractive valuations. So they've been all value accretive for the shareholder for the company. So according to you, what sets Jagran Prakashan apart from its competitors? Starting from a single edition, uh, the group has built uh, Pan-India presence now. Uh, with multiple editions, multiple brands. Uh, and what really sets them apart is the leadership which they enjoy uh, in all the brands in uh, the various languages in which they operate. And uh, this is something which they continue to do in uh, print and all the new media activities which they've undertaken. Uh, from an investment banker's point of view, you know, what we like is that uh, since the public issue, if we see, uh, Jagran's been able to build a very good relationship with the shareholders. So just the way they had a connect with their readers, now they've been able to have a very good relationship with their shareholders. Uh, so, you know, shareholders really like this group because 
in terms of the high standards of corporate governance which they have. Uh, they are very transparent. They are open about what's happening in the company, what's happening in the sector. Secondly, the way they manage their capital. Uh, you know, it's uh, they're very careful in terms of the investments they do, uh, in terms of the areas they get into. So in that sense, they are really protective about the shareholders' capital and they try to deploy capital in ways which will really add value. You know, Ravi, the other thing is that just the way news is being consumed is changing. It's no more the traditional media, internet, TV, social media. That's the order of the day. Do you therefore see that Jagran Prakash and Dainik Jagran actually losing their dominant presence because of this digital threat? You know, one has to look at the regions in which uh, Jagran operates in, which are the tier 2, tier 3 cities. So we believe that in the short term, in the medium term also, uh, these are regions which are really underpenetrated in terms of even print media at this point. So these are areas which will continue to have their own growth at this point. So we really don't see uh, any threat in terms of the growth uh, possibilities for this group in these areas. However, to connect with the youth, what they've done is that uh, they've launched, uh, I think, the only uh, bilingual compact uh, newspaper in the world uh, called iNext. So like that's a, a much briefer version of the paper, which is in both English and Hindi, and which is uh, something they're using and which has been a very successful experiment in their regions. And this is targeted specifically to the young people. Anyway, you know, uh, also, as I said, the company has been proactive in terms of using the internet. So they've actually used this uh, perceived threat as an opportunity uh, to connect with their readers who are currently out of their print, uh, you know, where the print uh, papers don't go, or in some other geographies or some other parts of the world also. So as we mentioned that, you know, they have built uh, a very successful news portal. They have built uh, mobile applications. And they provide news in a modified content, which can work on the mobile apps also. And you know, the print media is also the only industry where the more you sell, the more you lose, because the cover price does not cover the cost of production. Yet this group has actually managed to post profits consistently. So what is it that they know that others don't? So I think firstly, you know, if you see the business model for a, uh, for a newspaper is basically that... Uh, three-fourth or two-thirds, even two-thirds of your revenues come from advertising. So the subscription basically builds the base for your advertising. So in this case also, uh, while the, the cover prices have been moving up and probably the cover price for Jagran is probably the highest in India among uh, many newspapers, and the company also has a very focused plan for reducing the cost of uh, paper as a raw material, but the long-term strategy is, you know, to really push the advertising revenues more than the subscription revenues. So we believe that in terms of their circulation, in terms of uh, their readership, it's already very high. So there is a potential at this point, and that's the company's group strategy also, that we need to push the advertising on this existing base of readership and subscription. And that's where the focus is going to be. So while, you know, they cannot, there will be increase in circulation because demand will be there, the group will be focused in terms of trying to increase the cover price and in terms of increasing the advertising revenues. All right, so then five years from now, where do you see this group? We would expect uh, this company uh, to continue to grow uh, at a healthy rate. Uh, we would uh, definitely expect them to maintain their leadership uh, both in print, uh, on the net, on the digital space and in the radio space. So. Uh, continue to keep the leadership position and work hard to uh, be there. Also, uh, probably see a larger percentage of revenues come from uh, radio and digital, uh, as those are, I think, high-growth business areas. And lastly, probably continue to work hard for creating value for the shareholders. Ravi Sardana, pleasure speaking with you. Thanks very much. Well, that was Ravi Sardana's analysis of the company. On that note, it's time for another short break. When we come back, we look at the road ahead for Jagran Prakashan. Stay tuned. Jagran Prakashan has been quick to write on the digital wave. With the advent of the internet age, the company has already made strong presences in the digital space. The Jagran Internet Portfolio has 10 portals across genres like news, education, 
blogging, gaming, health, classifieds, youth and videos. The division offers products and solutions to consumers and corporate customers including services that range from web-based advertising solutions, permission-based content sales and contest and utility-based services like its digital classified platform. Its prominent websites Jagran.com and Jagranjosh.com have clocked 30 million unique users as on December 2014. We want to consolidate our position in, um, uh, in, in the web and continue to grow the way we are going. Plus, uh, we want to uh, increase our advertising revenue uh, if, if, uh, with respect to the readers that we have and the kind of advertising revenue we get. I think so there is a huge scope over there. So that is where the next five years I see that the kind of reader base that we have built, we continue to monetize it even more. And with the growing economy of uh, tier 2 and tier 3 towns, I see that happening quite well. And uh, plus, if any other very good acquisition comes along the way and the company has the cash, then we will go for it. The early mover advantage that has given Jagran Prakashan a great brand loyalty, coupled with its flexibility to innovate new offerings with the changing times, will indeed put the company on the next growth phase. Well, that was a very interesting story, running a media outfit and that to a print media profitably without compromising on the values of good journalism is really a tough balancing act. The Guptas have done it very smartly. They've taken forward the management's vision of journalism successfully by constantly looking out for profitable acquisitions and that's been their winning formula. On that note, it's time to say goodbye. We'll see you again next week with another interesting episode. Till then, keep watching. CNBC TV 18. Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable.